radio ABG procedures, uh, the rationales to perform a blood collection for arterial blood gases analysis using radial artery, um, gather and organize necessary equipment and supplies, properly identify and inform the patient of the arterial pr uh, puncture procedure, determine uh, the patient has been in a stable state for at least uh, previous 30 minutes, attempt to calm patient before collecting specimen if patient appears anxious before proceeding, determine if patient is on anticoagulant therapy or allergic to iodine or a lidocaine, record patient's temperature, oxygen, concentration, and respiratory rate. Wash your hands, put on gloves, face masks, and protective laboratory coat, and palpate radial area, artery, and forearm. Radial, radial artery in patient's non-dominant hand is usually the best choice. With the forefinger or first two fingers, press at the site to find the artery. Never use the thumb for palpating because there's a pulse in the thumb that may be confused with the patient's pulse. Avoid any site that has that has a hematoma or was previously used um, in an arterial puncture. Position the patient's arm with the wrist slightly extended and rotated. Check for adequate circuit. Uh, Collateral circulation using a modified Allen test. You guys need to make sure that you that you know what the modified Allen test is. If you look in your book, um, I'm not sure what page is on because I don't have my book beside me at this moment. Practice the modified Allen test. All right. This is also going to help you. This is it, practicing the modified Allen test is a great way to help you better understand what it is that you're looking for and what you should be feeling for when you're going to identify a vein for regular venipuncture. All right. So you take the uh, follow the steps in the book, practice on someone else because you need two hands. So you is you won't be able to perform this on yourself. You can be anyone, your your mama, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, fiance, boyfriend, girlfriend, kids, whatever. You just need to practice on identifying um, this this artery. All right. Modified Allen test performed before using the radial artery for blood collection for ABG analysis. Right. Make certain that the, the older and radial arteries are providing collateral circulation. Uh, compress both arteries with your index and middle fingers and ask the patient tightly clench and unclench his or her fist several times. Ask patients to open his or her hand and release the pressure on older artery. Allen test is positive when the hand fills with blood within five seconds. If color does not return to the hand within five to ten seconds, the Allen test is a negative. Okay. When practicing this, please do not be confused by what this is saying or what it's saying in the book. Just simply, if you take... I want I want you to take your take your hands, take your hand, pick one, doesn't matter which one, and make a fist and hold it as tight as you can. Hold it as tight as you can, count to ten, and when you open it up, I want you to notice what happens to your hand. As soon as you open your hand, your hand is, is going to be white and it's going to immediately turn back red or either pink. All right. If it does not do that, then that means you have poor circulation in your body. And you need to figure out what the problem is. That's exactly what you're looking for when you're doing the modified Allen test. All right.
So, if you see it come back within the five to ten seconds, then the test is positive. That means we got a good collateral circulation, and we can go ahead and perform um, the procedure for the ABG. If after five and ten seconds, your hand is still pale looking, the test is negative. All right. Stop. Try the other hand first, because you can't use other. You can use either hand. It's just recommended that you use the the artery and the non-dominant hand. Right now, if it fails on both, on abort the procedure. Connect with your nurse or physician and see what steps you need to take. All right, a negative Allen test indicates the inability of the ulnar artery to supply blood to the hand adequately and shows the lack of collateral circulation. The radial artery should not be used in a negative Allen test. All right, that's what it looks like. So it should be somewhere around figure 15-4 in the book. Once the radial artery site is chosen, clean the area with the chlorhexidine swab. If the patient desires to desires a local anesthetic, fill a one milliliter syringe with lidocaine, inject lidocaine within 20 with 25 to 26 gauge needle, subsequently around anticipated puncture site. All right, no tourniquet required because the artery um, has has uh has its own strong blood pressure all right use a pre-fill herponized safety syringe with a needle to draw the sample hold the syringe or collection device in one hand as the as one in one hand as one would hold a dart excuse me stumbled over there for some reason all right pull skin taunt with the finger of the other hand over the artery and pierce the pulsating artery at a at a high angle usually 30 to 45 degrees against the bloodstream little or no suction is needed since the blood pulsates and flows quickly into the syringe under its own pressure all right this Little or no suction is needed since the blood pulsates and flows quickly into the syringe under its own pressure. Just like earlier on in the first part of this lecture, we was talking about, I believe it was this lecture, we was talking about how if you're using a syringe to transfer blood to the tube, um, you don't want to plunge that syringe to force the blood in there. Because we know that can cause hemolysis and how causes the cells to rub. The same thing applies here. You don't want to pull that syringe because the blood is already free, free flowing and it's going to come out. And because we've already learned about hemolysis, we know pulling on a syringe too slow or pulling on a syringe too fast can cause these blood cells to rupture. All right. So we we'll make sure that we got a good, we made a good, um, we got a good puncture on the site, and we won't have to worry about anything. All right. See here, it's being done. All right. When use the ultrasound guidance with the phlebotomy, uh, phlebotomy set, guide the needle to the artery. Should the ultrasound reveal a deep artery, the use of the long IV catheter to access the vessel may be considered. And these are things that you will learn over time All right it's not something that you would just go in oh is it if you're if you're privileged enough to work in a facility that has the ultrasound that allows you to use the ultrasound technology um you're not just want to just dump in oh it's a deep vein and go automatically use the iv catheter you know it may just require a little bit more precision on on your part it may not be that deep it's a little bit deeper than your comfort zone but and these are things that you will learn over time. And that's why on, on the normal circumstances, when you're at the school, you'll be practicing. That's why it's imperative that we stick, that we stick each other and that we have a rotation going on. You don't want to keep sticking the same person over and over again, because in your mind, after performing a hundred some sticks on this person, you're going to think that, hey, 
all arms are going to be like this person's arm. And we know that that's not the case. All right, when approximately one milliliter of blood is collected, withdraw the needle carefully to avoid introducing bubbles into the syringe, apply gauze and, di and direct manual pressure on site for at least five minutes. Um, engage safety syringe cover to cover uh, to cover the needle's exposure. Gently mix blood in syringe with heparin and label syringe before leaving patient. Leave a pressure bandage on the puncture site. If bleeding from site persists, apply more manual pressure and ring for assistance from patient's primary nurse. Never leave a patient who is bleeding, particularly after an, ar an arterial puncture. If a patient, if a patient receiving an anticoagulant therapy, pressure is applied to site for 10 to 15 minutes immediately after arterial puncture. This is because we know anticoagulant is going to keep the blood from clotting. So the blood is going to, when you're, whenever you are bleeding because your body has a natural clot factor, when the blood, when you're, when the blood starts to clot, that's when the blood, and that's when the blood stops, will stop, all right? So if the patient is on anticoagulants, then that you mean you have to apply pressure for an extended period of time. It's going to take a while longer for their blood to clot. Notify, notify primary nurse after arterial puncture is performed, so area may be checked frequently for deep, or superficial bleeding, discard blood-soaked gauze, contaminated items, and gowns or gloves used in isolation rooms in biohazard waste containers. Dispose of gowns and, gowns and gloves not, not from isolation room in the regular trash. Wash or sanitize your hands. Immediately transport specimens to the laboratory for testing. Hand delivered within 15 minutes for best optimal laboratory results. All right. Therapeutic drug monitoring, the TDM. All right. Um, for those of you, for anyone that came in after Chapter 5 in EKG, you should know what this is. Um, for those of you new students who came in and started with phlebotomy, this is your first introduction to therapeutic drug monitoring. You will hear this again when you guys flip over into EKG. All right. Used to monitor the serum concentration of certain drugs. If drug is highly toxic, that's what we're checking for. When underdosing or overdosing can have uh, can have serious consequences. If the use of multiple drugs may alter the drug action. All right now, this is something that you definitely want to take take into consideration at all times. Not just dealing with with school your life period all right you know you don't want to be out here taking Tylenol, colon and sinus benadryl and motrin all the same because all these because all these different chemicals in your body can have an adverse effect um especially in conjunction to to what you eat i believe i shared with you all before if you didn't know that's why it's recommended that you take all that you take most medications with water. Some will say that you need to take them with milk or food to coat your stomach because the chemicals in these drugs um, are very strong and they will upset your stomach. All right. Um, and then keep them keep in mind that, you know, to be quite honest. You know, a lot of the food that we eat today has a lot of preservatives and a lot of hormones in them so they are finding that a lot of times now that uh antibiotics aren't working as well on patients for like certain infections because the uh the antibodies in the antibiotics can't match up with the antibiotics and the steroids and pesticides that are being used in and on our foods, right? So now 
what happens is people are remaining sicker longer um having to do having to get more and more medications all right I don't want to get on my soapbox about that but think about what i just said in conjunction to everything that's going on right now all right um, they're also used to monitor serum concentration in drugs. I already said that. Um, if individual patients patients uh, metabolize drugs at different rates, um, if the effectiveness of the drug is questionable, if compliance with medication regimes or concern, um, this first one. If patients meta, uh, metabolize drugs at a different rate at at a different rate based on your metabolism if you have a high metabolism or if you have a slow metabolism um, based on your level of activity these are things you have to take into consideration when we're using when we're using when we're taking medication all right if I'm an active person um, with a high metabolism like an athlete their body is going to burn through drugs a lot faster because their body has is already conditioned to constantly moving all right so it's like because your body while everyone wants to be you're saying thin like bodybuilders want to have like zero percent body fat like that's not really healthy because your body needs a certain amount of fat just like it needs a certain amount of bacteria to keep everything working properly all right so when you are working out Whatever you put in your body, your body is your body is gonna go. It automatically goes into shock. Okay, it's like, hey, something is not right here. Uh, we need to hold in as much as we can. That's why whenever you're working out, if you've done this, if you've done it yourself, or if you know someone, or if you are anticipating working out, that first week you have great, great progress. All right, because like you catch your body off guard and you, you may lose five pounds in that first week. The following week, doing the same exact thing you did last week, probably, I mean, it, with, your, with, the, with, the, with the same diet, whatever, you think you're going to lose another five this week and you only drop one. That's because your body's like, okay, we lost too much too quick. So anything that comes in here, we need to, we're going to hold everything hostage. Right, and as you go on and you uh continue to work out, then your body will will give and start to burn more fats and things of that nature. Okay, so and again, that's that's how it is with athletes, and that's why they'll they'll burn their bodies are burn through drugs quicker because they already are already at a point where they don't have enough fat, and so and anything that they do consume is being burned off immediately. So their body tends to, to, to hold things in, all right? Uh, or no, is this drug effective? These are things that, this is why we have they, those, those commercials. Um, I'll just go ahead and put these last two together. Uh, why you have those commercials, you know what I'm saying? And you say, oh, you know, I don't, I don't even know what this drug is for. I'll just say Solera. Um, it's, it's saying if you have, uh, Underlying heart conditions, Solaria has been proved by the USDA, Surgeon General, CDC, whoever, whatever, um, that this drug is, is shown to reduce this and, and improve that common side effects of the drug are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, upset stomach, uh, growth of growth of breast, deeper voice you know that the side effects for these drugs are always like astronomical all right and that's based off how the chemical how the the components come together but that's a that's another story for another day um but however we mix these drugs are they effective all right and if these drugs are effective are the side effects is it effective enough and in compliance with the medication regime and concern? Like, is it going to do what we need it to do? Yes. What's the downside to this? Oh, uh, you know, they may grow hair on their chin or men may grow breasts. Uh, you know, how many times will this happen? We'll put a thousand people in a room. Out of these thousand people, 30 people grow breasts. Hey, 
uh, people grew chain hairs. Whatever the case may be, all these odds they were willing to take, yes. All right, and so that's when they'll run it up the chain, get the drug patent, push it out on the market, yada, yada, yada. And that's that. All right. A complex endeavor that requires coordination among laboratory nursing and uh, f uh, pharmacy personnel uh, through levels of lowest concentration in patient serum in the blood. Uh, peak level is highest concentration of drug and patient serum in the blood. Again, this is just how. Pretty much this is exactly what I was just talking about about like the whole burning fat thing um i spoke to i spoke to the effect in the earlier chapters about why working out in the morning is the best time to work out because in your body you're doing a lot of stretching so you're burning you burn you burn a lot more calories in your sleep because you're doing a lot of movement um so all the the fats and things of that nature that are in our body rest on the top of our blood so we're not as heavy and not as sluggish um, doing that the the beginning half of the day and so this is how this is what we're looking for like in like in the blood level this is why blood results by blood work is drawn predominantly in the earlier part of the day because again these fats haven't settled in the haven't settled in the body and if this person has been taking drug has been taking a prescribed medication we can get this type of read or they may tell you don't take your don't take your medication uh so we need we, we need we need to check your levels um all these things go into the therapeutic drug monitoring all right uh so the the chart the peak um just essentially breaking down what the the level should look like based on uh, from the drugs based on the time frame all right uh blood specimen for therapeutic drug monitoring should be maintained in the upright position uh, during transportation, false lead available or decreased values have occurred with the use of gel serum separated tubes. Okay, transporting transporting samples need to make sure they are remain in a upright position. They need to remain in the upright position. The upright position that means you can't put them in the bag and just let them fall down on their side and you be going about your business la -da 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 -da, down to the lab because no now we're going we're going to mess up the results all right you need to make sure that they remain in the upright position all right um the gel separate the germs uh the gel serum separator tubes again this is why it's important to that we know the order of the draw all right if we're doing therapeutic drug monitoring we should not be using a tube that has that gel serum separator in the bottom. We should not be doing it. All right. Clinical and laboratory standards or CL, CLSI uh, SI, um, has, the, has devised uh, toxicology and drug monitoring requirements for, for blood collection containers. All right. This is, and this is essentially saying that they have approved um for certain things to take place with the when we're doing toxicology of, of drug drug uh drug monitoring all right so this is what it should look like if this person has this much of this drug in their body same thing Collection for trace metals or elements. Testing involves the use of specifically, uh, specifically prepared trace metal free evacuated blood collection tubes. Tubes and micro collection containers are available with low lead content to use in blood collection for lead levels. Right. Think about if any of you can remember, it's probably about I say within the last eight years, there was this whole ordeal. I'll, I'll even push it out to ten. There was this whole ordeal with 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 lead levels being like astronomical. Like everyone was getting lead poisoning. Kids was eating the paint. Um, it was it was found in the, in the toys that the kids was playing with. Lead lead levels just through the roof. 
I wonder. I wondered during that time if it was because, you know, people were just using their own tubes. My thoughts. Um, other special collection vials, uh, the lead tube tops are tan in color. The royal blue top tubes available for blood collection to test for trace elements. Specific specimen collection guidelines should be established as part of the clinical laboratory technical procedure for trace metal testing. All right. Genetic molecule test special. Um, informed consent must be signed by patient for genetic molecule test special stir vacuum tubes for, mole for molecule diagnostic studies available containing different additives. Uh, some examples are sodium citrate, sodium heparin, EDTA as required for different testing procedures. All right. Now, don't get this mixed up with the regular the, the 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 regular thing. Don't think too hard on this. All right, <laughs> just don't think too hard on this. The tubes, long as the tubes have these additives, that's what we're using for the test. For cyto cytogenic testing, uh, preferential blood samples. Usually requested to be collected in a green top tube um, containing sodium heparin. Heparin. Genetic laboratory test requires patients' correct demographics, age, place of place of birth, uh, patients' ethnicity, race, etc. Uh, genetic material um, RNA is only viable for approximately 6 to 24 hours. Um, specimens must be sent to laboratory immediately. Um, you know RNA, it's just one strand of DNA, it's a ribonucleic acid. It only has a, a life expectancy or shelf life of where between 6 to 24 hours depending on um, the storage rate. All right, intravenous line collection used to administer medication, blood products, or other fluids, substances either directly into the patient bloodstream require special techniques, training, and experience. All right, that's what your, that's what your IV line looks like, catheter. All right. Peripherally inserted uh, central catheters, PICC, inserted into the cephalic vein or basalic vein of arm or hand veins. PICC is usually only used for blood collection when, when it's first inserted, as we know, because um, that, because once the drug, once like once the line, once the catheter is inserted and drugs start going in, um, and that blood becomes gets trapped in those in those lines, it can be it can, it can become contaminated real easy. Um, it's a process like after that to get blood from that something that you definitely have to be trained on. Can become easily infected around the area. As I said, levels long term medication, intravenous antibiotics, uh, chemotherapy, and blood, blood product replacement. Guidelines to collection from IV lines. Usually not um, advisable to collect blood specimens from arm in which IV is connected as IV fluids dilute the specimen. Not recommended to collect coagulation tests. Um, examples of PT or APTT from heparinized uh, vascular access devices. 
Each time the IV system is accessed, pos possibility of contamination and infection, it, infection exists. Some facilities do not allow evacuated blood tubes used for collection for blood collection through a intravenous catheter due to potential for increased pressure building up in catheter, which is what I, I said before I even went over these two slides. Uh, usually managers of healthcare facilities require nursing or laboratory personnel to take specialized training courses prior to allowing them to collect blood from a central venous line. Just said all that. Collecting blood through a CVC. Um, equipment and supplies, PPE, PPE including sterile gloves and antiseptic for aseptic technique, laboratory requisition form and pen, evacuator tubes and labels for the specimen, transfer devices for syringe to um, evacuated to blood transfer. All right. That's one of the points that I'm not right here. If you go back and look at any chapter, any chapter in the book, go back to any of the first 14 lectures that I've posted. Because you know you got you guys can can stroll all the way back to chapter one on Ed Moto. And go over you you wouldn't even have to go back. You wouldn't even have to go all the way back. So if you just went to like chapter 10, go back to well, I I'd say I'll mark it, I cap it at chapter 10. That you could go back further than that. Um you know that it is strongly encouraged, or you're saying each of these steps include that you labeling the specimens at the patient's bedside. All right. In order to label a specimen at a patient's bedside so that they can identify that the information is correct before it's being transported to the lab, that means you need to have a pen. Now, when we were coming to school doing the labs, I told you all to bring your blood pressure cuff and have a pen. Now, because we didn't use a blood pressure cuff one day, you just decided, hey, we're not going to bring it. Because you didn't write something every day, figured, hey, we weren't going to bring a pen. It's unacceptable. You need to make sure that you have a pen, blood pressure cuff, steth stethoscope on you at all times, all right? whether it be at school or at work. These are, thing these are things that are essential to you being great. All right? These things can make or break. Again, you've heard me say it right around 100 times now it doesn't matter if it's your first day on the job or if you've been there for 25 years when you go in that room that patient automatically gonna, gonna perceive you as being an expert and if you don't have the simplest thing is not having a pen it's not a good look two 10 minutes two 10 milliliter disposable lure lock syringe fillers with sterile uh, normal saline one three milliliter disposable lure lock syringe with three milliliter inject injectable heparinized saline used for flushing the catheter two 10 two 10 milliliter disposable syringes with needleless cannula Uh, Antimicrobial swabs. Equipment and supplies. Oh, I just read that. Um, Lantern protector to provide a clean work area. Which is your sterile, your, your, your sterile field. There's a little, the little white linen that we put down, or a white piece of paper that we put down before we perform a venipuncture. All right. Basil ha biohazard container for waste alcohol wipes. All right. Procedural steps vary among hospitals. All right. Procedural steps vary among hospitals. All right. Now, while we are just talking about collecting blood from a from a catheter line, I told you. So I've said this said this before. I'm gonna re, uh, like to reiterate because we do have some new students that things are going to be different where you work. All right, they may only do certain tests, um, whatever the case may be. But for the most part, this the basics, the basis of the procedure is still going to be the same. This may have a couple of a couple variations. So it's not a matter of oh well, I was taught how to do this, or we do this over here. No, focus. 
Whatever it is that you're trained to do at your job, that's what you do. And leave it at that. All right. Uh, take patients chart for a physician's order to for a physician's order to draw blood through CVC. Obtain laboratory requisition of labels. Identify patient. Explain the test to patient. Wash hands with alcohol. Hand hand rinse. Put on gloves. Non latex. Preparing the similar equipment and supplies. Uh, aseptically draw ten milliliters of injectable normal saline into the syringe. Provide adequate room and light for procedure. Position the patient. Shut off IV fluids. Infusing through the line and unclap most uh, proximal lumen to avoid contamination from IV fluids. Prior to blood collection, stop infusion of IV fluids for at least two minutes. Depending on uh, facilities protocol. That is there. Right. Flush and allow saline. Flush catheter with five to ten milliliters of saline to determine um, patency of catheter. Catheter clamp catheter removes syringe and aesthetically insert new needle ten milliliter empty syringe and unclamp the catheter. That is what they've done here. Now they're drawing the blood. Swab cap again with a new swab. Insert 10 milliliter syringe into cap and aspirate required amount of blood. Okay, this first one. If you go back to the first picture, it's probably on after slide five. That's what you see them doing. Like you'll see that person cleaning the uh, cleaning the the, the cap. Uh, transfer blood from syringe to appropriate evacuated tubes using a safety transfer device and proper order of draw. Dispose of syringe and transferable device to biohazard waste containers. Swab the cap to aseptically clean it. Okay. Uh, aseptically uh, just simply means using the least amount of force and minimizing your contamination all right so you wouldn't want to hold um the capital line in your hand like in your in the palm of your hand and go to clean it you just take the take the cap hold it between your index and thumb finger giving yourself a little a little lead way so that it's not resting directly on your skin holding with a firm grip and cleaning Right, that's using the aseptic technique. Like when you go to catheter needle off, you wouldn't put your whole hand over the capital needle and pull it off like you may do a, a pin cap. No, hold the needle, thumb, index finger, remove the top aseptically. Let's as minimal contamination as possible. All right, there's flushing the line again. Get ready to uh, try to clean that, that, that blood out of there so. That way it doesn't become contaminated and leading the patient to get sick. All right, clamp catheter removes syringe to maintain, to maintain positive pressure on syringe plunger with your thumb while withdrawing syringe from injection cap to avoid possibly possibility of, of occlusion. Occlusion means block. Okay, so we learned that earlier on in phlebotomy. Now you guys getting ready to switch back over into EKG. You guys make sure that we're familiar with occlusion. Uh, flush the line with heparin if required. Unclamp catheter. Gently infuse heparin solution. So we just seen in that, that last picture. Change cap. Cap should be changed after each blood collection. Determine the IV. Determine that IV fluids are infusing properly. All right, here we go. Disposing of the needles. Immediately label and transfer blood specimens. Wash your hands. Thank patient for cooperating and depart with all remaining supplies. Document co completion of procedure and any problems that occurred. Cannulas and fistulas. Cannulas, the tubular instrument used in patients with kidney disease to gain access 
to Venus to Venus Blood for dialysis or blood collection. Fistula, artificial stent in which the vein and artery have been fused through surgery. Avoid using the arm with the fistula as the site for venipuncture. Donor room collection. Donor interview and uh, selection. Date and time of donation. Last name, first name, middle initial, address, telephone number. Gender, age, date of birth, written consent from sign, written consent form signed by donor, a record for reasoning for deferrals, if any. <coughs> Excuse me. Social security number or driver license number, name of patient or group to be credited. Race, not mandatory, which is not mandatory. Uh, unique characteristics about a donor's blood. A brief physical examination it should be your weight, temperature, pulse, blood pressure. All right. Uh, skin license, general appearances, hem hematocrit, he hemoglobin valves, extensive me uh, medical history. Uh, blood should be collected by using a the technique, a sterile closed system, and a syringe. Uh, sing single venipuncture healthcare workers may uh, well versed in donor reaction equipment safety precautions, first aid technique, and location of first aid equipment in cases needed for in case needed in uh, course of donation. Uh, patient donates his or her own blood before uh, anticipated surgeries. Safest blood, safest blood a recipient can receive is his or her own blood. Eliminates um, formation of antibodies and transfer patients. Um, and this is something I talked about in a in an earlier chapter. Uh, again. Before I say anything else, I want to apologize to the new students because um, I don't want to confuse you. I've had I've had this come up um, again. Any information, anything that we've went over is strictly in the books. All right. Um, doing these lectures, I, I ad lib, put in some of my experiences, um, give my thoughts on things. Um, If there's something that you do not understand or you want to know why I keep referring back, you know, you can utilize utilize your index, in the back of the book. Um, you like read through the chapters, make sure that you have a thorough understanding because you should be reading the chapters in conjunction to these lectures. <clears throat> uh, and again, because the way Edmodo is set up is just like Facebook. There, and there are glitches, but you can definitely scroll all the way back to chapter one, all right? Or and, and look at these, then look at these lectures and look at all the assignments or whatever, or what have you. Or because I post the videos on one of my YouTube channels to make it easier for you to view them, you go to my channel and you can just watch the the videos and you know, uh. I said all to say because again, I, I don't want to confuse you. I've had students make comments in the past. Well, why do you keep referring to things that you already went over? Uh, because I want you to know, because you're going to see this again. All right? Uh, repetition is the is repetition is the father of learning. Um, you want to hear me repeat? If I'm doing a lecture, you'll hear me repeat things over and over and over and over and over again. And it is in my hopes that you will take heed to what it is that I'm saying. If it's something that's being repeated over and over and over again, with repetition being the father of learning, should maybe, maybe, just maybe, you will get the notion that it's important. All right. Uh, but yeah, so, but this is definitely, uh, it's definitely great. It's something that has been becoming more and more of a thing. Because as the 
as things continue to grow in the healthcare field and more and more people are having um, reactions and things are happening to them, having to go under for surgery, it's much easier for them to donate their own blood in the event that they lose an, a, a great amount of blood so that they know that they have blood ready. Because we oftentimes, if you just look around or just listen, you will often hear that like LifeShare or whoever the blood collection company is in your area, if you're not from Louisiana, like if you move here from somewhere else, you often hear them say, hey, that we're we're experiencing a, a blood a blood shortage. All right, so if they are short on blood and say you're going to have a surgery and, you know, while you would hope that everything is going to go good in the event that you do need some blood and there's a blood shortage, you know, chances of you getting their blood are just not that great. So to eliminate the middleman, um, just donate, you'll donate some of your own blood to be stored in case that you need it. All right. Uh, now, even in the event that there is blood that you get because it's not from your body, you know, antibodies could, could begin to form depending on how long the blood has been sitting or whatever the case may be. Um, and just naturally, because every person is unique based on their DNA, everything in your body is synonymous and synced to your genetic code, which is your DNA. Um, and anything foreign in your body, your body is going to attack it and kill it. So if you lose a pint of blood and you have to get a pint of blood put in you and your body doesn't recognize that pint of blood, your body is going to kill that pint of blood. So guess what? Now you're back to where you started. You're down a pint of blood. You're going to continue to feel weak until your body produces that blood. And it takes like six to eight. It takes more than six weeks. I can't. I. I. It's not coming to me now. The appropriate time. Um, I want to say six to eighteen weeks. I feel like I, that's a good time frame for me to operate in and continue to make this statement. Like six to eighteen weeks for your body to produce the amount of blood loss. When we're talking about plasma, it takes twenty four. It takes up to forty eight hours. All right. The plasma you lose will be produced. Re, will be reproduced in forty eight hours. Um but you could donate again after 24 hours, uh, not th the next day. It has to be a full 24 hours um, in between donations um, or what have you. So it's just, it's just, it's a great idea, a great plan. You know what I'm saying? If you going to have to have um, a major surgery, um, predominantly like a, like heart surgery or something like that, if you just donate your blood prior to that and, you know, that way you don't have to worry about that. That's what, that's what I, I went on that whole little rant just to say all that. All right, therapeutic phobotomy, intentional removal of blood for therapeutic reasons for treatment of myeloproliferative dis diseases such as polycythemia and hereditary hemochromostasis or other conditions in which there is an excessive production of blood cells. Um, and the different excesses patients ultrasound allows visualization and vessel evaluation for successful completion of therapy. All right. Um, you know, because when there's there's an excess amount of blood being produced, you know, they were naturally going to stretch the skin out, swelling, um, so to speak, and it'll be more challenging to identify those veins is not just something that you can just put your finger on or um, things of that nature. So use the, the ultrasound to help you 
um, evaluate them. Um, yeah, so, and there's that, that is chapter 15, like in a nutshell.